Good morning, friends. It's me and my co-star, say hi. We are gonna show you how we baby-proofed. I have some unique cabinets, couldn't find anything to baby-proof them until I ran across a genius hack. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna do outlets, we're gonna do the stove, we're gonna do everything. His nursery, there are so many things that I didn't even realize need to be baby-proofed until I had a baby that was on the move. Mm. So, here we go. First and foremost, you see this gate behind me. I don't know if you guys have seen my living room before. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ro. I talk about everything that's happened in my life. Right now we are in the phase of, could you see him? Say hi. We have a toddler. He just turned one last week. I'll put in a picture of what my living room looked like before. We had bookshelves. We had a nice, big, beautiful coffee table. The couch was set up. This room looked nice and normal for two single adults. However, we got a climber. Check this out. Just like all babies at his age. You gonna climb the couch for everyone? No, you're being shy? He wants to pull his diaper off instead. So every time we told him to not climb the bookshelves, he would look at us and be like, yeah, right, mom and dad. Guess who's in charge? Not you. And I started researching like how to get children to, <laughs> is that even a thing? But no, seriously. And a lot of people said, a lot of people said that my video is way too sunny. A lot of people were like, well, I just told my baby not to climb and they listened. Not this baby. Eventually it just got too dangerous. We had picture frames. We had like little ceramic knickknacks on there and a ton of books. Even the books got too dangerous because he would open up the pages, rip them out and try to eat them. So we just put the bookshelves in our spare room. And then the coffee table had edges and it had these little knobs. Anyway, I tried to baby proof that table. I was thinking like pool noodles. I got the stuff around the edges, but they didn't stick. It was just way, way too dangerous. Anyway, he rolled the dice. He could have gotten hurt on this table and I just wasn't feeling it. So we moved the coffee table out of the room. We moved the couch back against the wall and we're like, let's gate this off so he can have this whole room to play. It took forever to find this gate because those gates are expensive. There's ones that turn into play pens there are the stair gates doorway gates but we needed a long one that would do the whole entire room and this one is amazing they're like anything from 250 to 400 dollars for those gates ridiculous this one i found for 105 dollars on amazon and it is literally amazing the edges bolt into the wall all of these individual gates move these things unscrew adam has them real tight can't do it myself but they unscrew and then you can manipulate these any way you want so we had this gate straight for a little while then we kind of moved it so it's like a little opening and then we put a little rug there it could go into an octagon so you can make like a big play pen the possibilities are endless adam bolted them into the wall but these unhook from the top and the bottom i'm not gonna do it because i don't know how <laughs> and then you could move the gate back it has a door and then right here just pops up slide that under and lock it for us we have to lock it because our smart little guy he hates he hates when i lock it if i keep it up like that he knows how to get in and out and that's one of his favorite things to do so sometimes i'll just leave it unlocked and sit here with him let him play on the gate go ahead play do your thing though yeah you're showing everyone a tutorial okay so that's the living room except one more thing we also had to get these, I'm sure you guys have seen these, they come in all different kinds of shape sizes. Some of them come really cute. They look like little bears, they look like little characters. These are just the little outlet covers. You can see it has the little prong and it fits right into this hole. And I try to always do this when he's not watching because this little stinker is gonna figure out how to do that one day. He always tries to pull them out. They're in there very tight. It's hard for me to even get them out without breaking a nail. He plays with them sometimes and I try to get them away from him. But you can see he's not gonna be able to get that out. Just to note, if you're a new mom, they like blinds. So this is tall enough for him to reach. He's in that phase where he'll stand up and he pulls on those. So what I'll do is I'll pull these up so he can't reach them. However, if you guys have hanging cords, I know it's probably common sense, but sometimes you just don't realize. So if you have hanging cords, just tuck them away up there so the babies can't, God forbid, choke or anything on them. That's his baby-proofed playroom. We've made it to the kitchen part of this video. This was the most stressful part for me. Little Christian, not so little Christian, 
takes after his daddy and he's really tall. So he's gotten to the point where he could stand in front of the stove and he could reach the little burner knobs. First of all, he could turn it on and burn himself. And second of all, he could turn them and let carbon monoxide out and we would have no idea. So I found these on Amazon. I don't know if you can see, but I'll show you up close. They're knob covers. So this brand is the heart of Tafiti. I will put everything in the description box below with links, just so you can get ideas. Or if you want what we used, this is exactly it. They look just like this. And they close. So this is a hinge. These are two on either side is a little piece of plastic that you push and that opens it up. And what I didn't know is these burners, you can pull it right off. So what you do is you take this burner, you open this up, you put this through here. So the little knob that goes back into the stove part is out the back. There's a hole right there. And then you're gonna put this back on the stove. And then you close the knob. And you repeat that on every burner. I have to push my knobs in and turn them like most stoves. If you spin these, it's not gonna turn the stove on. When you're ready to use the burner, all you have to do is push those two little side pieces in, open up the knob, and then this will turn on its own and close it. You don't have to take that knob all the way off. That's a pain in the butt and then you close that and you're child-proofed again. I've always baby-proofed houses or been in houses or babysat at houses where the kitchen cabinets had handles. These, you can see the top and the bottom cabinets are the same. You pull from the bottom or the side and the cabinets open up for you. For you guys that have handles on the outside, I'm sure you've seen it, but just so you know, you can get these little pieces of plastic that go through each handle on either side. They lock. I'll try to find it and put a picture or a video up here, but you can unlock and lock that. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on that, if you don't have the money to spend on it, I get it right now. Things are crazy for everybody. What my mother used to do was she would take a wooden spoon and slide it through those handles, just like that plastic lock does. And it does the exact same thing because now this is locked. And if baby pulls on those handles or on the cabinets, they can't open. I was still out of luck with that because I don't even have those handles to slide anything through. So I found the world's best hack. What you do is you take these M3 command hooks. What they're sold for is to take to hang picture frames. They came in a package of four. I bet you they have them at the dollar store. I got mine right on Amazon just to make it easy. Come in this strip, okay? The strip is perforated. This opens up like this. You piece them together. It's like Velcro. This is tape and that's sticky. You peel back the tape, okay? And then you're gonna open your cabinet, make sure that you put the tape and the Velcro in the right spot where it's gonna catch on both sides. Just stick it on there, peel the tape off of the other side because those are Velcro together. Close it and you're gonna press hard for 30 seconds. Then you let it sit for an hour. This one I did earlier in the day and you can see it set and now it's perfect. This one might be a little bit controversial, but Christian kept trying to dive off of the bed head first. So Adam actually taught him how to go Come down on. feet first. He does climb up there and we're not there to watch him. At least we know that he can get himself down safely. Okay, little man fell asleep. So I'm kind of being quiet. The last room that I baby proofed thoroughly, I guess, is the nursery. Fortunately, kind of, I had to rearrange furniture. There was just no way around getting all this stuff unplugged from the outlets, but I have to keep that plugged in and there was, Every other outlet, I have those outlet covers that I showed you in the beginning of the video in. That's fine. But this one, I have to keep that plugged in because you never know when he's going to need a diaper change. And it's frequently throughout the day. This is one room where I can let the baby just let loose, make a mess, clean up the mess at the end of the day. No big deal. And like if I have an emergency phone call or something that desperately needs my attention. I know he'll be safe in here and I don't have to watch him on top of him constantly, if that makes sense. I can put him in here and run three seconds to the bathroom and come back and I know he'll be fine. He can't get into anything that's going to potentially hurt him. Tried everything. I tried to put stuff in front of that outlet, like his little jumper while well, he learned how to climb underneath it. I tried to unplug the white warmer and plug it back in when he needed a diaper change. Problem is they would be too cold in between because sometimes they're frequent. So I just wound up pushing the crib caddy corner and blocking that off. Does this look as cute as it did before? No. Do I care? 
not at the moment. Even when we have guests over, they just know that something's going on. It looked cuter the other way, whatever. Point is, sometimes you have to move around furniture just to keep the baby safe, no big deal. I had like plastic stuff in here. I had to empty those out. I had other stuff on here that wound up going on the top shelf just because he was pulling them down. I was afraid he was going to get hurt. We have knobs in these dresser drawers you could see they're still on the higher drawers that he can't get to yet he was putting them in his mouth and turning them with his teeth so i was afraid he was going to get those off they're small enough to be a choking hazard i believe in order to open these drawers without their handle we took shoelaces and we just put them through tied a little knot so that opens and then to open the top one that I'm not in very often, but it's very easy. You just slide your hand under there and you pull it open from the bottom. It takes two seconds. That's what I have going on in here. When I have him in here, I shut the door. He's not tall enough to open that door. And then I can just sit here, get some work done if I need. And he plays really, really well in here. This is a closet. It always just stays shut. I just make sure that this bathroom door is always shut. My doctor told me even a dog bowl is a choking hazard, which I never even thought about. Like a dog's water bowl. I never even thought about that before. So they do make toilet seat little clips that go there. I've read mixed reviews of the ones that I looked at on Amazon. He likes to go by the bath. The other day I was in here with him, but he like went to lean in and I was afraid he was gonna fall. I was afraid he's gonna turn on the faucet. So the best way that I've found to baby proof this bathroom is just to keep the door shut when we're not using it. When he figures out how to open these handles, which he's not walking yet, it's, he can stand on his own, he can push things when he's walking. So I'm sure it's a matter of a couple weeks, maybe a couple months max. Once he is tall enough to do that, I'll have to figure out how to baby proof those handles because I'm sure he'll be able to get in and out. I'm sure I will figure out something and then I can make a follow-up video if you want, like phase two baby proofing. The other thing he does is he goes into this closet very frequently. He had taken that all apart. I reorganized it. He has blocks that came with a bag with a zipper around and it's kind of a plastic material. And then there's a plastic window, window in the bag so you could see through it and see the blocks. He had it over his head the other day. So I had to put that kind of stuff, anything with a lot of plastic, I have to put on the very top shelves of the closet up here. Let me know if you guys want more videos like this, what you guys want to see kind of in like a transition right now with baby stuff, how you baby proof, what else you think I need to do baby proof. And we'll go from there. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. What are you doing? Are you trying to figure out how to open those cabinets? What's going on? Uh oh, he's a smart little boy. He's trying to bite it open. We call this a success. <laughs>